Well, hello again for USCFSales.com. I'm Steve Lopez with another Fritz 13 tip for you. We've been looking at new features in Fritz 13. We've covered a lot of the Let's Check features in the previous few videos, but now we're going to go back. We're going to take a look at some other features that you'll want to use as a Fritz 13 user that are not just specific to Fritz 13. In fact, what we're going to talk about today is the engine analysis pane, doing infinite analysis of a position in Fritz, which you can also do in chess base and which you can also do in other companies' chess programs. This is one of those features that has been in chess software since the beginning. We're going to show you what the numbers mean in the engine analysis pane. Got a position here from an old Karpov Mikhail Tau game from 1980 that I've been looking at this game, and it's it's a pretty interesting game, at least interesting to me. And we come to a position. I'll back up a move or two and show you what's going on. Uh, Tau moves a pawn forward to attack White's bishop. Then White Karpov captures a pawn. Now, what does black do here? Does black go ahead and cop off the bishop, or does black take care of the pawn and wind up with an isolated e-pawn? We, I've been looking at this with a number of different chess engines. They've been arguing about it all morning long, so I want to see what Fritz 13 says about this position. So to have Fritz 13 analyze just this position, not the whole game, we go up here to the home tab and we find a button that says infinite analysis and that starts the chess engine that we've selected in this case Fritz 13 and has Fritz analyzed this particular spot in the game so let's click it and see what we get the engine pane down here springs to life and I've increased the size of the font to make it easier to see what I want to describe to you is what all these numbers are in this engine analysis pane, in case you're not familiar with the way chess engines analyze and what they're showing you. This is how Fritz talks to us. This is how Fritz tells us what's going on in a position. What you see, first of all, in this little box right here where I'm moving the mouse, is the current analysis. Now, what Fritz is doing is Fritz is analyzing, looking ahead, looking at individual positions and assigning an evaluation to them, and a score, a numerical evaluation. And it strings together these different positions to find what it thinks is the best line of play for both players, both black and white in this position, as far ahead as it can go. That's a little more complicated than that. But what it's looking at right now is this particular variation is the best one it's found so far in its search, and this box shows you the evaluation. With best play for both sides, what we have is an equal position. That's why there's an equal sign here. There's also a numerical evaluation. Right now, dead even, 0.00, .00 if this particular line of play is followed. What 0.00, .00 means is that's a, a pawn valuation. For example, if this said 1.00 right now, it would mean that one side or the other would be one full pawn ahead. So the number before the dot is the number of pawns. The number after the dot is in hundredths of a pawn. Right now, again, we have a dead even position. Depth means how far ahead Fritz has looked. The number after the equal sign in depth is how far ahead it's looked in half moves also known as plies, how many plies deeply is looked. Each time a player moves a piece on the board, that's a half move or a ply. So a depth of 20 ply, as we see here, would mean that Fritz has looked 10 moves ahead for both players. The number after the slash, in this case 42, is a selective search how far Fritz has looked ahead in forcing lines, checks, captures, different uh, variations that begin with moves that require a response from the opponent. Very tactical lines. So it does look farther ahead in selective search mode where it's looking at very tactical moves, very forcing moves. What we see here is the move it's currently looking at and we see there are 31 possible moves in this position. That's what this box is showing us. The number after the slash in parentheses is how many legal moves there are in the position for the moving side. In this case, it's black's move. There are 31 possible moves for black. It's looking at the first of these 31 moves, and this is the move it's currently considering, F takes E6. As a related note down here, this variation in this box at the bottom is the variation that Fritz is currently considering. 
What's interesting about this number in parentheses is this can tell us how long it's going to be, roughly, until the next ply depth. It's looking 21 ply deep, 10 and a half moves deep. It's considering the first of 31 moves. As this number before the slash starts to go up, 2, 3, 4, 5, then it'll jump to 7, 10, 15, that tells us it's getting close to finishing this particular ply depth. Notice, by the way, it's looked a little farther ahead. If we go back to this first box here, we see that we still have a roughly equal position, but that white has an advantage of nine one-hundredths of a pawn. When you're looking at this box, where it gives you the evaluation, a positive number in parentheses means that white has the advantage. A negative number means that black is ahead in that position. So white has a very slight edge here to the point where it's essentially, for all intents and purposes, an equal position. Jumping way over here to this box, KNS, that means kilonodes per second. That tells us how fast Fritz is analyzing. Fritz is looking at 539,000 positions per second. That's what KNS means. N stands for nodes. That's positions. That's just computer talk for individual positions. One position is a node. Kilonodes means 1,000 positions, and the slash S means per second. So Fritz is currently analyzing at a speed of 539,000 positions per second. It's looking at a half million moves per second. You have a little clock running over here, that just tells you how long Fritz has been thinking. That's just how long it's been working on the current position. So it's been looking about five minutes now. Notice here, it's now looking at knight b6, the second of 31 moves. Now it's jumped to three. Notice it'll pick up a little steam as it goes here. Unless it finds something pretty interesting in a different variation, it'll cook along pretty quick. You'll see that it start incrementing this number here. Three of 31, you'll see it go up to four, five, seven, It'll go pretty fast here after another moment or two. There we go, five. Fritz has looked 21 ply ahead. 60 plies, that's 30 moves ahead in forced variation mode. And boom, it's that quick. We're up to a ply depth of 22. And now that it's looked a little bit farther ahead, we see that white is about a quarter of a pawn ahead, according to this box right here. We have the best variation that Fritz has found so far. That's in bold in this big box. Down here we have repetition of what's up here. The evaluation numerically and in chess symbol form. This evaluation, this line of play, this best line of play and this evaluation was found after Fritz had looked 21 plies ahead in brute force mode where it tries to see everything and 60 plies ahead in selective search mode where it's looking at tactical forcing moves. It took 4 minutes and 58 seconds to reach this evaluation, and it looked at 160 mega nodes. That's 160 million positions to get to this evaluation. This is the best line of play that it's found, and this is the evaluation. White is very slightly ahead here. And we've already answered our question. What we were interested in was this. Was Tal correct in playing C takes D3, or was there a better move? And according to Fritz, there was a better move. He should have taken on e6. It's an interesting position. I've run other chess engines on this position, and I've seen other engines say that Tal did the right thing by playing c takes d3. So there's been this big argument with chess engines all morning long, and this is just another little more grist for the mill, another opinion. In Fritz 13's opinion, Tal would have done better by playing f takes e6. Infinite analysis, by the way, will run until you stop it. That's why it's called infinite analysis. It'll theoretically run forever. Of course, it won't. It might have a power outage. You'll need your computer for something else somewhere along the line. But it'll run until you stop it. The question is, how do you stop it? Well, there's a stop button right here in the engine analysis pane, or you can just go back up to the top here to the infinite analysis button and click on it again and that stops the evaluation. As we see, it is now stopped. We have a go button where we can restart it if we want to. But that's basically what these numbers mean. The big things to look at here are really the depth, how far ahead it's looked in half moves. Just take that 
number divided by two. That's the number of chess moves ahead that is looked. It's looking 22 plies deep, which is 11 moves for each player ahead. The other part over here is the evaluation. Who's ahead, who's behind, by how much. Remember that you will get an informant style chess symbol. You will also get a number, and that's expressed in cent pawns, hundredths of a pawn. In this case, white is ahead by 22 hundredths of a pawn. Remember the positive numbers mean that white is ahead, negative numbers mean that black is ahead. Now that we understand these numbers, we can use Fritz to analyze complete games, which is probably the most important thing that this software can do for you to help you improve your chess. We'll look at that in another video. Till next time, for USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez. Thank you for watching.